at another transformation now. And this transformation is another transformation in which we multiply the function. Here we're going to take our function f of x and we're going to transform it by multiplying x by a. So in our particular case here, we might look at transforming sine of x into the sine of 2x. This is a little bit more complicated transformation, but again, if you remember from the work we did in trimester one, this transformation is a horizontal dilation. by a factor of 1 over a. Remember when we start doing things inside of our um, function, when we start doing things to the arguments of our function, that the, that the effects of the transformation are reversed. So in this particular case, it's the reciprocal of that number that, that gives us a result. Well, let's take a look at an, an example here and, and see if we can understand what this transformation does in, in a more um, basic way. So here again, we'll look at uh, a, a graph of our, of our standard plot here from 0 to 2 pi. And we won't change the amplitude this time. We'll just keep our amplitude as is. Um, but let's, this time, let's go ahead and take a look at, at cosine, just, just for a change here. So cosine will look something like that. Not my best graph, but you get the idea. Cosine does something like this. So we could, we could say this is, this is the function y equals cosine of x. And now let's think about making some sort of a transformation here. Let's, let's wonder for a second here at what y equals the cosine of 2x might look like. What the, what the cosine of 2x might look like here. When we've been looking at non-periodic functions in the past and looking at transformations in which we had vertical dilations and horizontal dilations, they kind of got very confusing and they almost had the same sorts of effects, just slightly different scale. And here we're going to see that there's a very different result between these, these two things. Um, this cosine of 2x, this 2x means that we should expect to have a horizontal dilation of one half. So a horizontal dilation of one half means that everything gets half as far, everything gets half as far from the from the y-axis now as it was. In other words, for example, this distance here gets cut in half, and this point will move over. The distance from zero to pi from this point will get cut in half, and this point will be moved over to here. Everything will be moved over by uh, a factor of one half. In, in other words, each x coordinate of every single point on this curve, every single point, if we look at this point right here, for example, this is the co this point has the coordinates three pi over two, comma zero. And what will happen is this particular point will be moved over so that its x coordinate is one half of this value. Now half of three pi over two is three pi over four, which is this point right here. So the graph, this point on the graph will move to the new location, 3 pi over 4 comma 0. What's going to happen is we can think about this cosine function like a spring. And as we increase this number in here, as we increase this factor in front of the x, that increases the pressure on this spring and makes it squish down. In fact, this 2 and this, this horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 half tells us that, that any section of the spring will now be half as long as it was before. Let's go to Geometer Sketchpad and take a look at that. And again, we'll just start here with the, with the cosine graph. You can see the period of our cosine graph. Our, our cosine graph is a maximum of 1 when x equals 0 and repeats itself again when we get to 2 pi and then again when we get to 4 pi over here. So we, we say that this cosine function has a period of 2 pi. If I start to change this coefficient k that's multiplying the, the x value inside of cosine, however, we're going to start to see some interesting effects. So let me go ahead and move this out to 2. You can see that our function does indeed become more compressed, kind of like a spring. And if we look now when k is 2, so now we're looking at the function y equals the cosine of 2x. When we look at this function, what we see is that we have a compressed function and the period has changed. In fact, because this has been dilated by a factor of 
one half, the period is now half the period that it was. You can see that the period now is a period of pi. We start with a maximum at zero, and we get another maximum at pi, and we get another maximum at two pi, and another maximum at three pi. So what has happened here is our period has decreased by a factor of one over k, or in this particular case, one half. If I bring this even further up, if we look, for example, at making this four, Okay, that compresses our spring, that compresses our function quite a bit horizontally, and now you can see that the function has a period now of pi over two, which is one fourth of its original period. Two pi was the original period, now we're at pi over two. We get that by taking two pi divided by four. Another interesting thing you can see here, another way that some people find to help themselves understand better the effect this has, especially when they're graphing, is to look at the fact that we have a k value of four. Let's look at how many cycles, how many oscillations fit between zero and two pi. If we look at that, we have one oscillation here. We have a second oscillation here. We have a third oscillation here. And we have a fourth oscillation here. So between zero and two pi, in this particular case, when we have cosine of four x, we have four complete periods or four cycles of this graph in, in the space of two pi. That should make sense to you because if we have decreased the period by one fourth, that means that four times as many oscillations will fit in a, in a particular length. If we drop our k value down to three, you can see that, that this kind of a change stretches our graph out. But between zero now and two pi, you can see that there are three complete cycles of our graph. We have one complete period here, another complete period here, and a final third complete period here. That gives us three periods now within the space of two pi because our k value is three. If we continue to decrease k further, and in fact go to a k value that is lower than one, so we'll stop here at one just to say hello, you can see that the period is back to two pi. The function repeats itself in an x value of two pi. So we're at a standard cosine period. If I decrease k further, this is going to have the effect of stretching out our, our spring. It's going, to, it's going to pull things out even farther. And if we go to a k value of 0 0.5, if we go to a k value of 0 0.5, then you can see between zero and two pi, between zero and two pi, we don't even have a period anymore. We actually have half a period. So k tells us the number of periods we have in the space of two pi. Or another way to think about this is we have to go all the way out to four pi to get a complete period. So let's let's write some of this down. This is a lot of a lot of information for us to um, to digest. But the period of our trig function. So for sine of kx or for cosine of kx, the period of the graph is 2 pi divided by k. This is a very important idea. This is the idea or this is the fact that allows us to quickly make these transformations. Whatever factor is multiplying x inside of the trig function is, is the denominator in this expression to determine how the period changes. So for example, um, let's, let's do one, one last example. Let's see how we might reason this out. Suppose I'm asked to find the, the graph of the function y equals the sine of 4x. The only value I see here that's changing is the actual um, period. There's no, other, there's no other coefficients or factors that are transforming this graph in any other way. So I'm going to look between positive 1 and negative 1 at this particular function. And we'll go again in our standard graph all the way out to 2 pi. And what I'm going to recommend to you is something that we talked about and, and hopefully you made use of before when we were dealing with transformations. And that is, I'm going to graph out the original parent function first. I'm going to graph out just y equals sine of x so we can see the behavior of this function and we can understand how things are transformed. So this graph right here is actually 
y is equal to the sine of x. This is our original trig function with no transformation applied. So this 4 changes our period. Let's understand how that, how that works. Our period now is going to be 2 pi divided by k. It's going to be 2 pi divided by that 4, which means we have a period now of pi over 2. Recall what the period is, is how long it takes this graph, what, what x value it takes, what x length it takes for this graph to repeat itself. So our graph is going to repeat itself every pi over 2 units. Well, it turns out that this value right here is pi over 2, which means that the graph is going to repeat itself between 0 and between pi over 2, so a very short section right there. And of course, that also means it's going to repeat itself between pi over 2 and pi, and between pi and 3 pi over 2, and between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Every pi over 2, we're going to get this, this original sine graph. So sometimes as you're graphing this, it's helpful to um, place points that, that you know of for sure. So for example, I know that in one complete period, the, the sine graph will, will have a, an, an initial starting point, a, a middle point, and an end point that are all on the x-axis. So in this particular region right here, I'm expecting the graph to do something like this. And I'm going to expect this same re repetition. You can see that this is really, this, this graph that we've sketched out right here is really just a compressed version of this graph here. So we're looking at the, at the compression going on here. I'm going to continue and, and continue to fill things out. So we know that we're going to have minimums here, here, and here. So my function is going to do something like this. And again, another complete period in this region here. And another complete period in this region here. So we get a an oscillation that looks something like this. It's a little bit sloppy, but, but with time and with practice, you can come up with good results even as you sketch some of these more difficult graphs. And again, just to, um, just to reiterate here, notice that I have one complete period here, one complete period here, one complete period here. I have four complete periods in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, and that corresponds to the four sitting right here. That's another way for us to, um, to use the information contained in K to help us understand how that transforms our graph. So the assignment that goes along with this lesson is, is given to you right here. Um, you may begin it now and we'll be working on that tomorrow in class.